Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we can see learning Python and today we'll talk about the most important pattern for repository pattern. So let's start. In one of the previous videos I showed you about, I, I told you about repository pattern. So what is it, how does it work? And to refresh your memory, repository pattern is just a pattern that allows you to split your database management and your logic. So if we have something like, I don't know, create user function, create user function, instead of doing our requests, um, they can be ORM requests or just throw SQL requests or any kind of database uh, database queries. Instead of doing them inside of our create user function, we're gonna have our user repository and we're gonna create that repository here. So user or repository equals user repository. And then if I want to save my object, so I want to create a user, I, I'm just gonna call repository.save. It's better because we, remove the database uh, database management and all that stuff from our logic layer and uh, it's going to be much easier for us to change that in the future if we need to. And even if we don't, it's going to be just easier for us to work with it. However, there is a big problem with user repository in that, uh, in that format. So save and update functions are, they are right. So save, you just save your object. Update, you just update your object. There is nothing wrong with it. There is no problems. However, if I'm gonna remove them just for the sake of that video, we're gonna be left with two or maybe three uh, methods in our repository. So as you probably know, those methods are not required. You create them as you wish, but typically you're gonna have something like get maybe all to return all of your entries and filter to get some specific records from the database using some sort of a filter. And there is a problem with those methods, which is really, really, really important. So what is it? Imagine that I want to get my user by his ID. So I'm gonna say something like return user dot get ID equals ID dot one or dot filter in that case dot one. It's just an example, so it's not a real ORM. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm saying get my user using his ID or hers ID. What is the problem with that? Imagine that we have a request or query to our database that wants to get our user using his username or we want to get our user using her date of birth or we want to get our entry using some other filter so id is not the only thing that we're going to query for i think you'll probably know that because if i uh, for example search for my friends in a search bar i'm not going to type get me a friend with id number one i'm going to type his name maybe his uh, nickname or something else so we can't predict all the fields that we're gonna use inside of our repository. We can't, we can't predict all of the fields that are gonna be used in our queries. And that's a big problem because if we want to really get the database management from our business logic query to our repository, it's gonna be a problem that, um, yeah, that we can't predict all the requests. So what we can do, we need to, for example, right now we need to search for three fields, ID, username, and uh, let's uh, have something like, Mm, I don't know, date of birth, date, uh, birth date, I'm gonna name it like that. So we can have three of those, uh, three of those parameters in our user, user filter query. What is the problem with that? Well, the problem, the first problem is that we add a lot of parameters inside of get. So as you can see, user repository, it grows and uh, it's not really a good sign when your repository grows. Yeah, so when your repository grows, it may be unmanageable in the future. And what is the second problem is that if I want to only query my user using one of those parameters, what I need to do is say something like ID equals none, username equals none, birth date equals none. So when I want to get my user from my user repository, I can say that ID is one or I can say username is two. So I can get either of those um, parameters. So that is one problem. We can't really have all the parameters inside of our get function because it's going to be really, really, really unmanageable. The second problem is that if I add any logic, if I add something like if id equals equals, or sorry, if id is not none, then return user.filter by id. If uh, or elif username is not none, return user filter by username. Something like that. So if you want to add uh, that kind of logic when you use um, 
ifs in order to define what is going to be inside of your query, it's going to be a problem as well. Why is that? Because if we use that uh, those ifs, we add logic to our repository. And it's really, really important for you to understand that the repository pattern itself should not contain any sort of logic, maybe a little bit of logic. And that uh, code should only be connected or related to the database itself. So that code, in our case, if ID, if username is related to our business logic on how we query our users. It's not related to database connections, maybe something else. So if you put logic in your repository, be sure to check that your logic is only well, you should not put any logic at the first place, but if you do, check that it's only related to the database and database management, all that stuff. However, there is a problem here. We add our logic and um, it's unsustainable. We can uh, add as many parameters as we wish. And uh, yeah, that's a big, big problem. The same goes for filter. So there is a problem. Filter and get functions, so the functions that query our data are unsustainable. Save and update functions in our repository are fine. So we just save and update, but what about get and filter? What should we do with them? And there is a pattern for that case, which is called specification. So specification is a pattern that allows you to get the logic or get some filters from your repository and move them out of, of your repository. So instead of doing all of that, and instead of getting ID, username and birth date, I'm just gonna delete it for now. And I'm going to create specification here. Specification. Just like that. Specification is going to have only one method, which is called define is satisfied. And uh, kind of like that. So for each ORM, for each technology, for each language, your specification is going to be different. Um, the pattern itself can be very, very, very different in terms of, so one pattern cannot uh, be replaced by another one. So one quest cannot be replaced by another one in terms of specification. They can be really, really different even in one project. Because specification is not a pattern that allows you to extract the logic from a repository. It's a pattern that allows you to check if your object or if your thing, in our case, is going to be our records in the database, suit you, suit you. Yeah, if they suit you or not, if all of the things in your object are satisfied or not. Kind of like that. So that is specification. It only checks if everything or if the object or if an array of objects, if an array of records, if something is suits you. Yeah, so if something suits you. That's basically what specification pattern does. So for now, we just get, we're gonna have specification pattern as uh, a base class. We can even return raise not implemented error here. And as I said, the definition of specification pattern is gonna vary vastly. So. For now, what I want to do is, for example, create um, a specification so that we can query the user using his username. Once again, it may be really, really difficult for now, but you understand what I mean by specification in a minute. So what I'm going to do is say username specification. And of course, typically we split our repository and specifications in different files, maybe in different modules, but it depends. So specification is going to be here. And what I'm going to do inside is say define is satisfied and I'm going to return a dictionary of um, username equals and let's create init function define init username self username equals username. And let's say that it should be a string. Kind of like that. So I'm saying that we are returning a dictionary inside of is satisfied. It's going to contain username, maybe even username exact, self, um, which points to self username. What is that you may ask? How does it check for anything? Well, let's look at our get function. Inside of get, I'm going to have a parameter called specification, which is going to be our specification. And inside of filter, let's imagine that inside of filter we have quarks. So quarks or queued arguments is um, a dictionary that we can add. So we can add as many arguments as we wish and the dictionary is going to contain all of them. After that, we can expand the dictionary. I forgot the real word for that, uh, for that thing, but we can expand the dictionary with two stars and uh, it will allow us to create something like argument one equals value one, argument two equals value two. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say specification is satisfied and then I'm going to expand it. 
So what I'm doing, we have specification base class. It's just a base class, nothing very interesting here. But then we have username specification. It accepts a username as a parameter and we save it in our variable. Then I'm saying is satisfied, return username exact. So if you worked with Django RAM and even with SQL Alchemy, you may use that technique. So username exact, well, exact is just for, for the example, but basically what we're doing here is we're saying that you need to add that filter to our quarks. So we return a dictionary and we're saying expand the dictionary. And what we're gonna have at the end is username exact equals um, to the username that we provided inside of the init. For example, I don't know, Andre, like that. So we're gonna just expand our specification in our user filter. And that's how it works. So right now, what we can do is inside of our user get in create user function, what I can do is use username specification. And then I can say, uh, search for username Andre, or search for username, I don't know, something like that. That's it. So what we're doing with specification is we're basically saying that the specification is gonna contain all of the checks for our object. In our case, it's gonna contain a check that our username exact, so username is exactly self username. And when we're gonna use get function, we're gonna use user filter, so the same as we used it before. And instead of using row parameters here, we're gonna say specification is satisfied, which is gonna return username exact. And if um, we're using expand, we can say username exact equals to self username. And that is gonna be the query that we're gonna execute. If I wanna say something else, for example, we are gonna have um, age specification, which is gonna inherit from specification. And of course, in init, we may provide parameters like uh, from age or mean age, I don't know, integer, self mean age equals mean age, mean age, like that. And then define is satisfied, return, mm, age greater than equals self mean age and that's it then if i want to change that uh, if i want to search for the users that are for example adults so their age is greater than 18 what i can say is um, age specification here and minimal age is going to be 18 or 21 depend on depends on where you live but 18 for me age specification Kind of like that. We can use different specifications and um, allow them to really change our queries to the database without changing the query itself. That's how it works. And if you're wondering, GTE is greater than equals. So um, a lot of, well, you can just work with Django ORM if you don't know what that is. But yeah, a lot of things can be explained very easily if you just work with Django ORM. So GTE is greater than equals. So G H should be greater or equal to self mean age. Very, very simple. Aside from that, we can combine our specifications together. So for example, class, username, age, specification. Of course, you're gonna name it more descriptively, but username and specification is all right. We're gonna have is satisfied, and what we can do here is get two specifications together. So for example, username and age, we're gonna copy them from here, paste them here, save them and uh, so let's say username spec and age spec of course you can provide the arguments and do all of that stuff in init or somewhere else and the most important thing for you to understand is that when you're using get or filter or all depends on how you call your function in repository you should always get your logic and put it somewhere somewhere else inside of specification in our case also what you can do in that particular case it's not always a great idea because with specification you can combine them, you can reuse them whenever, wherever you want, but sometimes you may use quarks if you have something like a Django ORM and you want to use um, expansion of dictionaries inside of your Django ORM. But specification is gonna be a more reliable pattern in terms of yeah, in terms of usability because what you can do is have different classes. Well, you can have a lot of classes that one that's one drawback, but yeah, you're, you're gonna have to be sure, you're gonna have to make sure that uh, you don't have a lot of classes, so you are only combining the things that you really need. Of course, you can combine two separate um, 
statements inside of one is satisfied. For example, age greater than equals and age lower than equals. For example, self max age, if you have something like a max age requirement. So kind of like that, that is specification. Aside from that, I want to show you what is uh, another way of using specification. So what you can do is inside of is satisfied, you can have an object or expression. Some languages call it expression, uh, but I'm just gonna call it object or entity. Depends, let's just call it object for the simplicity. What you can do is have um, a specification that not only works inside of your repository, but also works inside of your code itself, inside of your business logic. Because specification is a check for something. And what you can do here is say, you know, let's say user is allowed specification. Then uh, let's inherit from specification. And then define is satisfied. And the return, uh, return object dot age greater than 18. Like that. It's going to return true or false. And you can get your logic and put it somewhere else. So instead of uh, using your logic inside of your create user, instead of using it, object.h is greater than 18 here, what you can do is use user is a dot, dot is satisfied. Of course, it's not always the best case because uh, yeah, if you have something like object.h is greater than 18, you just can, you can just use it. But of course, if you have a lot of requirements, so your object should, or your user should be an adult, your user should be from, I don't know, from Europe, your user should be um, a male or a female. So if you have a lot of requirements, you don't want to just list them all inside of your create user, because first of all, your requirements may be used in some other places in your project. So what if that's, um, what if you want to check that your user is an admin or a super user? So he should be an admin, a super user, and uh, belong to our company, so company, company belong, something like that. You have three things in here. What you can do is use something like a specification for super user admin specification, and then just get all of the ifs from here or all of the conditions from here and put it inside of your specification. That's how it works. But of course, not, it's not always the best pattern, but sometimes if you want to check that your object has some particular things inside of it, so has some has some properties, you want to use specification or you may use specification. That's how it works. I personally used it with repository and I have never, well, yeah, there are moments when you need to use it with simple objects and there are lots of those moments, but I've personally never used it like that. So yeah, but I think I will use it in the future. So we'll just see. That's how it works. So thank you for watching. My name is Ender. Subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment and bye-bye.